Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Transfer Fair. Thank you for joining us tonight. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time throughout the night. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Now I would like to turn it over to our first presenter of the evening, St. Louis University. Oh, okay, here we go. Let's see. All right, can you guys see my screen okay? All right, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. My name is Kelly Mishler, and I am a transfer admission counselor at St. Louis University. I work closely with students that are transferring from schools outside the state of Missouri that are interested in coming to St. Louis University. So I've been in the Office of Admission for about five years or a little over five years. But I'm also a two-time alum of St. Louis University. So SLU has been a huge part of my life, so I'm excited to tell you guys a little bit about it. So first off, just some fast facts about SLU. We are a medium-sized institution, but we also have that Catholic Jesuit affiliation. So our undergraduate population is a little over 8,000 students. If you include the total population of everyone at SLU, it's around 12,500. So we have an urban campus feel, but we do function like a traditional campus setting. Uh, St. Louis University was founded in 1818. So we are the oldest institution to the west of the Mississippi, and we are also the second oldest Jesuit institution. We have two campuses. So our first one is in St. Louis, Missouri, and it is minutes away from downtown. So if you like watching the Cardinals baseball or St. Louis Blues hockey, you can definitely attend those games as well. And we are also walking distance from Box Cedar and Forest Park. So Forest Park is two times bigger than Central Park in New York and a lot of students enjoy going there as well. We also have a campus in Madrid, Spain. So if you're interested in studying abroad there, you can definitely have that opportunity as well. Um, so something about the Jesuit education is all about the philosophy of education. So we want our students to be educated um, hol holistically as a whole person. So our students are growing um, in their faith personally and professionally as well. And so basically our students become well-rounded when they are attending St. Louis University. So at SLU, we believe in academic excellence, social justice, and being men and women with and for others. So one of the main ways our students live the Jesuit mission of being men and women with and for others is through service. So you'll hear a lot of our students getting involved in service opportunities. So at the very bottom, you can see that we have given 1.98 million hours of service every year, and that includes our faculty, staff, and students. So our students want to do this because they want to make a difference in the community and also the world. We have many different areas of study. So at St. Louis University, we have 90 undergraduate programs. So these include areas within our College of Arts and Sciences, our Parks College School of Aviation, Engineering and Technology, our Shaken School of Business, and also our Doisy College of Health Sciences. So those are just a few. All of our programs are direct admit, so you can apply directly to that program. And you'll also have the opportunity to start taking classes in that area your first semester when you attend SLU. And we here at St. Louis University, we also have great hands-on exper experimental learning. So our students are encouraged to go outside of the classroom to do hands-on learning. Um, and because of this past year with COVID and whatnot, we, it did cause some challenges, but our students were able to learn in many different ways whether it be in the classroom or outside the classroom. There's many different ways to get involved at St. Louis University. So we are a, or sorry, we have 18 division one sports teams and we also have club sports and intramural sports teams. But if you're not interested in athletics, that's okay. We have 150 plus clubs and organizations. So there's many different ways to get involved at St. Louis University and tons of different ways to find your fit at SLU. 
Here is just the application process. So students can apply online through our website or through the common application. There's different documents needed just depending on how many credit hours you have complete since graduating high school. So if you have under 24 credit hours, we'll need your high school transcript. Starting this year, we have become test optional. So you're not required to submit your test scores. However, if you have more than 24 credit hours, we do require official college transcript from every school you've attended, including your dual enrollment credit. And as a transfer student, we do allow merit-based scholarships upon admission to SLU, and we also offer need-based financially when you complete the FAFSA as well. And when you apply to SLU as a transfer, there's no deadline, so you don't have to submit your application by a certain point. We are a rolling admission school. So if you guys have any questions, you can drop it in the chat or the Q&A, and I'd be happy to answer them. You guys can also visit our website at slu.edu. We have tons of different virtual um, tour options, and you can also schedule a meeting with me as well. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks. And next up, we're going to go to Maryville University. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Terrence Andrews, and I'm Associate Director of Admissions at Maryville University. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and pull up my presentation. Okay. So Maryville University is a small private liberal arts university uh, located uh, in the suburbs of St. Louis, Missouri. We're actually roughly about 15 minutes or so away from uh, St. Louis University and about 20 minutes away from downtown St. Louis. Uh, we are, I guess, considered a mid-sized campus because we do have a total enrollment of about 11,000 students. However, our undergraduate population is right around 2,900. Uh, we do have a very large uh, online population. So a lot of students who may never see the actual campus, uh, but we still believe in uh, traditional on-campus learning. And that's where we have the 2,900 students, uh, most of which are coming in right out of high school. How we do also have quite a few students that transfer to Maryville each year. Uh, as far as academic programs, there are about 90 academic programs that we offer, and they're divided between four, uh, excuse me, two colleges and two schools. Uh, so the School of Education, uh, the Simon School of Business, uh, the College of Arts and Sciences, and then the College of Health Professions. Uh, we are NCAA Division II for our sports. Uh, at this time, we have 23 athletic teams, uh, 12 women, 11 men, uh, and we'll actually be adding two additional sports uh, in the upcoming year, uh, men's volleyball, and women's field hockey. Uh, classes are on the small side, about 25 students per class, uh, roughly about 14 uh, students to every one instructor. Uh, we also have students from about all 50 states and about 58 countries from around the world. Our most popular academic programs are gonna be our nursing fast track program, our education program, so everything from early childhood through secondary education, graphic design, uh, our interactive and game design, uh, cybersecurity, our rolling sport business management program, and our computer science program, which we're actually rolling out uh, this fall, uh, this upcoming fall, excuse me, uh, which will actually offer various tracks uh, within computer science for student learning. Uh, we believe in a very innovative approach to learning and teaching. Uh, so about maybe about seven years ago, we launched the Digital World Program. Uh, the, the main component of it is that every student uh, coming to Maryville, uh, attending full-time or as a full-time student will actually receive an iPad. Uh, we don't do that as a lure to get you there. Uh, actually, you'll probably use the iPad more than you use anything else on campus. Uh, and we fully, we're fully invested in it. Uh, we are an app, Apple, excuse me, distinguished school. Um, the app, uh, the, excuse me, the uh, iPad that you receive is going to become preloaded with about 200 different apps. And the great news is that you'll actually get to keep the iPad after you graduate from Maryville. Our career outcome rate, uh, we've done very well. 
Uh, typically within six months of graduation, we find our students, or at least 97% of our students actually in their career field working or going on to graduate programs. Uh, breakdown by college or school, arts and sciences is about 96%, business about 97%, education about 97%, and health professions is 98%. The Maryville investment. So currently our tuition is at $24,766 per year. And that's what we call full-time enrollment. So students enroll in between 12 and 18 credit hours a semester will pay the full-time rate. Uh, room and board is additional 10,300 if you choose to live on campus. And then we also charge a fee rate of $2,400. Uh, tuition was recently lowered by 5% and will be reduced by a total of 20% over the next few years. Uh, this is a listing of all the scholarships that we offer. Uh, our scholarships are automatic, so students don't have to apply separately for them. If you meet the minimum requirement, you're gonna be offered the scholarship. And then this is a couple of uh, competitive, if you will, design and visual arts scholarship. And then we offer a few, uh, what we consider participation scholarships. So students who may be interested in Esports or playing in our pep band or cheer or dance. How to apply? You can apply online. Uh, we have a Maryville application for admission that you complete, or you complete the uh, common application. Uh, we will require you to submit official transcripts from each institution you previously attended. Uh, if you have 30 credits or less, uh, then we will need your high school transcript. And I have a short little video for you. And we do offer virtual and on-campus uh, visit experiences. Uh, we also participate or have uh, what we call uh, saints, saints, excuse me, sneak peek, which are on Wednesdays. And then we also do some live webcasting, uh, which you can actually uh, check out via our website, maryville.edu slash visit. Again, my name is Terrence Andrews and I'm Associate Director of Admissions at Maryville University and would love for you to check us out. Please type any questions you have in the chat. I will be around to answer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have North Dakota State University. Okay, and I will get my screen shared. Okay. Let's Okay, perfect. So I am here from North Dakota State University, um, which is located in Fargo, North Dakota. We are a student focused land grant research um, university. So just uh, my information if you want to jot it down. Um, my name is Carolina Pettis and I'm actually no longer a transfer admission counselor. I'm the assistant director for transfer recruitment, but I was once in your shoes. I transferred to NDSU um, after my first year of college because it wasn't a good fit at my previous institution. So whether you are like me and looking to transfer after your first year, maybe you've completed a two-year degree and want to maximize um, some opportunities for you, or you're returning to college after being in the work for, workforce or military, um, NDSU is ready to support you through your academic journey. So here's a bunch of numbers on the screen. And I know it can get a little overwhelming when you're looking at colleges. Um, so I want to give you just a little bit of background of what these numbers would mean to you as a transfer student. So NDSU has a little over 13,000 students. Um, we refer to this as a mid-size institution. Um, for undergraduate students, it's about 11,000 with um, the, the remaining 2,000 students getting their professional degrees, master's degrees, doctorate degrees. Um, with this size of institution, it's 
large enough where you're not going to know everybody on campus, but when you're in your classes, you're going to see those familiar faces, particularly once you get into those sort of upper level classes that really relate to your major. We have a 16 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So what does this mean? It really means that our faculty want to get to know you as a student. I always encourage my students that I'm working with to get to know their faculty. Um, faculty members have office hours twice a week, um, usually right after a class, and they want you to come visit them. Sometimes they are begging you to come visit them. And this is a really great opportunity um, to see how, the, how faculty got interested into what they're studying. Like I said, we are a research institution. So this is another way that you can learn about what your um, professors are doing research on. And when I talk about research, it's not just oh, like a white lab coat and beakers. We have um, faculty doing research of all different kinds. Um, we have faculty that are doing research on cookies. So you get to taste a bunch of cookies and learn about their nutrition value or um, taking a look at like Christmas letters and seeing what people talk about. Um, another really good reason to get to know your faculty is when you're in that professional job or looking for a professional job and you need a professional reference. This is where getting to know your faculty um, and your professors really comes in play. A hundred plus different majors. So we have everything from accounting to women and gender studies. And it's okay if you don't know um, what you wanna major in. We have a career and advising center that will work with you to um, talk about your likes, your dislikes, and sort of create a class schedule that will um, develop into a major that is going to work for you. And then finally, 67% uh, of our classes are 40 students or less. And so, yes, if you're gonna be taking an intro to psych or a general biology, those are probably gonna be those large lecture style classes. However, once you get sort of out of the general education um, required classes and really into your specific major classes, um, that's where you're gonna have that small sort of intimate feeling um, for classes. And that's where you're really gonna get to know one, your faculty again, but two, also the other students um, in your specific major. So how to apply. We have an easy free online application at ndsu.edu backslash apply. It should only take you about 15, 20 minutes to fill out that application. We recommend students apply two semesters before you intend to start. However, as a former transfer student myself, I definitely did not do that. So whenever you're ready to transfer, we will be here for you. We need you to submit all your transcripts from every institution you've ever attended. So that includes your your dual credit college in the schools, um, AP exam results, things like that. If you have less than 24 credits, we will ask for a high school transcript. Right now, we are waiving the ACT or SAT. We um, recommend that you have a 2.0 GPA. Um, there is an opportunity to submit a personal statement if you want to talk a little bit more um, about your time in college. And just one thing to note is that some majors do have a higher GPA requirement. And then what's next for you? You can check out our virtual view book online or um, all of your transfer resources at ndsu.edu. Um, but also feel free to contact the Office of Admission or drop a question in the Q&A and I will be more than happy to answer it for you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Next up, we have the University of Utah. 
Hello, everyone. My name is Paula Plant, and I'm an admissions counselor with the University of Utah. I have a brief presentation to share with you all that I'm going to get loaded up right here. Okay, so welcome to the University of Utah. As we get started here, I just have some general information about the University of Utah. So the University of Utah does have two campuses, one located here, our main campus in Salt Lake City, Utah, as well as a partner campus in Incheon, South Korea. So if you're interested possibly in studying abroad and would like to go to Asia, our Incheon campus might be a great option for you. We are a relatively large university with about 24,000 undergraduate students, but even with that relatively large undergraduate population, we still manage to maintain a 17 to one student to faculty ratio, and we keep our average class size at around 23 students. So yes, like others have said, some of those gen ed courses will be a little bit larger, the big lecture hall, stereotypical college type of course, but as you dive deeper into your degree and your intended major, your courses will become smaller and you'll really get a chance to know your classmates and your faculty a little bit better. Um, we are a tier one research university, meaning that we have a ton of different research opportunities on campus in a variety of different majors. So again, not just for things like science, the hard sciences in a lab coat, you may be doing a lot of different research. I know we've done some studies about traffic in the city of Salt Lake City is something we're working on right now, as well as a variety of other things. And being from some out of state students, I really would like to share a lot of information about our location with you. So we are located just east of downtown Salt Lake City. We're about a five to 10 minute bus ride to the Capitol building. So we are pretty darn close. And I should mention that all students have free access to public transportation in Salt Lake City. So we have a few different modes of track of <clears throat> excuse me, transportation. Uh, we have some city buses as well as tracks, which is like an above ground train and our students get free access to all of that. So really easy to get into downtown Salt Lake City and see all that it has to offer. A lot of different restaurants, shopping, cultural events. It really is a vibrant capital city. And then located on the other side of campus, we have the beautiful Wasatch Mountains. So in these Wasatch Mountains, there's seven world-class ski resorts, all less than an hour drive away from campus. Places like Alta, Park City Mountain, Deer Valley, Brighton, some of the most famous skiing in the world is right in our backyard. And if maybe skiing or snowboarding isn't your thing, students utilize these mountains in a variety of other ways as well. Rock climbing, mountain biking, hiking, camping sometimes are all very, very popular with our students. You can see the beautiful mountains in my background here. So that is something that I have to share with all of our out of state students. And then just a little bit more information about Utah as a whole. We do have five national parks in the state of Utah. All of those are around three to five hours away from campus. And this is something that our students would like to enjoy doing on weekends. Getting a weekend trip down to Moab to see Arches National Park, which is what I have pictured here, is definitely something that a lot of our students take advantage of. Now focusing a little bit more on academics, at the University of Utah, we do have 18 different colleges that offer over 150 different academic programs. So that's a lot. Um, there are a few that I will share with you just after this, but you should know that if you don't see the particular major that you're interested in, we do have an option to kind of cater and build your own major, as well as being undecided is totally okay as well. So the first school that I would like to share just a brief amount of information about is our David Eccles School of Business. So you can see all the various majors in the David Eccles School of Business on the right side of the slide here. And we do have the Student Investment Fund, which is an over $700,000 portfolio of real money being traded on the US Stock Exchange. And that fund is managed completely by our students. So if you're a member of the David Eccles School of Business, you could get involved in the Student Investment Fund and have a great opportunity for some hands-on trading right while you're still a student in your undergrad. Another last college that I'm going to share with you is our College of Engineering, where you can see all of the different majors on the left side this time. But what you should know is that cutting edge research is the name of the game in our engineering department. We have 26 different research centers and some of our notable alumni have participated in research while they were undergrad students at the U. So we have John Warnock, who's the co-founder of Adobe. His name is all around campus and you'll see some of his work there. And one other research opportunity that I'd like to share with you is this Luke arm, which is what is pictured above. So this is a prosthetic arm that can feel and move. So it's really, really groundbreaking. And that happened right here on campus at the University of Utah. 
these are our transfer requirements. So obviously you have to be a graduate from an accredited high school and you need 30 or more transferable credits that are completed while you're applying. If you have that and a 2.6 GPA or higher, those are our transfer requirements for the University of Utah. If you have less than 30 credits completed, we will need to take into account your high school transcript as well. Now on top of that, if you have an associates completed, you will only need to have a 2.35 GPA. So really a few different options for our transfer requirements, but I'm glad that I was able to share all of those with all of you. Really quickly, I would just like to point out that our difference in tuition from in-state to out-of-state is about $20,000. And the reason that I wanna point that out is because in the at the University of Utah, it's very, very straightforward to apply for residency. And if you do, you can make and have that savings of around $20,000 after your first year on campus. So what you have to do is be present in the state of Utah for one full year, prove financial independence, meaning your parents can't claim you on their taxes. And then third is establish ties to the state of Utah, meaning you get a driver's license or register to vote in the state of Utah. If you do those three things, you could have that $20,000 in savings and be paying in-state tuition after one year on campus. So thank you so much for hearing about the University of Utah. Here is my contact information. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any other questions or if there's anything I can do to assist you and give you some more information about the U. Go Utes. Thank you, Paul. Next up, um, we have Paul Quinn College. I believe that's a perfect segue. So thank you, Paul, for your name, or I should thank your parents um, in, in that regard. But first and foremost, I wanted to, uh, of course, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sean Witten. I am the Director of Enrollment Management here at Paul Quinn College uh, in Dallas, Texas, or in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area. I'm gonna share my screen here, so, uh, an introduction to, to Paul Quinn and, and have a better understanding of who we are at the same time. Um, so as I get things situated here, uh, I like to note and reference that not only as an introduction of myself, uh, I mirror uh, much of our student body. Uh, we are a small institution um, in the sense that we also have around 500 total students, but at that same time, majority or 80%, uh, 80 to 85% of our students uh, are coming from first generation backgrounds. So they'll be the first to attend uh, the college uh, in their family. Uh, generally speaking, uh, beyond just our, our student body, I certainly want to want you to understand who Paul Quinn College is uh, and who we are from who we've been uh, in that same token. So we are the oldest historically black college uh, in the state of Texas uh, and west of the Mississippi. Our roots really began in 1872 when we were started by AME church pastors in Austin, Texas. They had a vision to start a school as a means to provide education to former slaves and their children. Since our inception, we've really had this idea that we would be able to transform lives through education. And so much so that we were able to implement a curriculum that focused primarily on vocational training and offered a few sprinkles of the liberal arts. We've now been able to carry and amplify that tradition in providing a quality faith-based liberal arts inspired education that not only addresses uh, the academic, social, and Christian development of our students, but does it through an innovative model of urban higher education, because we're now focused on entrepreneurship, experiential learning, uh, and academic rigor. Under the leadership of our president, Dr. Michael Sorrell, we've become one of the most innovative and inspiring small colleges in the United States. We not only identify as an HBCU, but as a small private faith-based four-year liberal arts inspired college with a reality-based education. So what do I mean by reality-based education? In 2015, we adopted a new student financial structure called the New Urban College Model. Among many characteristics, which I won't bore you with, we reduced student tuition and fees and provided students with the ability to graduate with less than $10,000 of student loan debt. The national average is growing closer to $25,000 to $30,000. So with our new urban college model, we've been able to take on the distinction as an urban work college, the first and only urban work college in the United States. The work college allows us to design, or is designed, I should say, to provide students with meaningful work opportunities that not only serve them in the Quinite Nation, but are also 
uh, offering the, op the opportunity uh, to build the necessary skills, habits, and experiences to be competitive in the 21st century job market. And that's because you're actively contributing towards the cost of your education. That means you're either having a job on campus of $3,000 or $5,000 paid for you, uh, or you work with one of our corporate partnerships like you see in the photo on the screen here, uh, in which you could have a $10,000 or $15,000 paid internship throughout your time. So if you're a student who's coming in with a healthy amount of credits, let's say you have two years to go until your degree, our typical cost is around $16,000 total cost of attendance. And so over two years, that's $32,000 total. If you were to take on one of those $15,000 paid corporate internships each year, your bill for college over at Paul Quinn would only be $2,000 in that regard. Ultimately, this speaks to our vision and to our mission. Our goal is to provide justice as inspiration. We want to end intergenerational poverty and offer our students the opportunities to transform their abilities into action and their potential into achievement. And we do that by uh, focusing on the ideals of disciplined work, servant leadership and initiative in preparation for a, uh, a successful life. Uh, and that's what we call the four L's of Quinite servant leadership. And we want our students to leave places better than they found them, to lead from wherever they are, to live a life that matters, and to love something greater than themselves. And it's here in the classroom that you really begin to ins be instilled with those things. So as I mentioned, we are liberal arts trained or have a liberal arts tradition, but focus on your the skills you need for your future careers. So we offer seven degrees and 11 concentrations. Some of our most focused degrees are engaged uh, as it relates to business administration, legal studies and criminology, and our bachelor's of science and liberal arts focused in mathematics, where our students will have the opportunity to, to guide themselves towards accounting, finance, finance uh, and or computer science as well. In addition to this, our student body lives out that mission uh, in a vibrant and engaging way. Uh, when we are on campus uh, and not online, we have a very uh, thriving campus and an engaged family here. And so you may have left your family at home, but have had now the opportunity to be joining one of our Black Greek Life Divine Nine sororities and fraternities and have another family in that respect. Or if you had the opportunity to join 45 different student clubs and organizations like our Student Government Association, or our HBCU Battle of the Brains team, or our Young Executives Entrepreneurship Club. It's just a matter of how you want to engage in your experience, and we want to be there to support you with the resources to do so. We do compete in the NAI Division I level, and that's in men's and women's basketball, cross country track and field, men's and women's soccer, uh, and women's volleyball within that same respect. What comes from your four years? What comes out of your, I'm sorry, two to, uh, two to three years, let's say, uh, within that respect, is a great deal of what we call nation building. The success that will come from the foundation you set at your time at Paul Quinn. Chandra Jackson's the young woman in the uh, purple dress at the top corner. She's a 2015 grad who had the chance to go into graduate school and has become a professional speaker, author, and HR consultant. Certainly her education has allowed her to be profitable, but at the same time, she's purposeful. She's an Amazon bestseller for a book that focused on mental health and spiritual well-being. And that's exactly the type of education we want to instill in you so that you can go out and make these types of contributions to the world. How do you get in to these types of opportunities? Our process requires the following. A minimum 2.75 GPA on a 4.0 scale. The weighted piece is typically for our high school side of things, so don't worry on that side. Uh, a free application with no essay uh, in, that, in that same token. Uh, official transcript from any and all colleges that you might have attended. If you have less than 15 credits, we do require that you submit uh, a high school transcript alongside all the other documents. Uh, we ask that you also uh, complete a letter of recommendation, just one, uh, a resume, and a phone in or a Zoom interview with us as well. And here is the way to do so. Our little friend, the dinosaur here, um, is going to tell you that you are roaresome. Um, and so scan this QR code here, and you'll be able to, it'll be able to take you directly to our application link. Uh, beyond that, I do want to, to note a, a brief thank you. Um, uh, and it is uh, Jacques Maritain who once said that gratitude is the most exquisite form of courtesy. So I greatly appreciate your time uh, and hopefully we will be able to express and enjoy that gratitude together once you become a Quinite.
Thank you so much. Thank you. And our last school for the evening is Western Colorado University. Great, thank you so much, Kelsey. Um, thank you all for joining us this evening. I, um, like everyone else has said, greatly appreciate your time. And um, I hope that this information is incredibly helpful for you in the transfer process. My name is Lindsay Leggett and I am a Regional Director of Recruitment for Western Colorado University in Gunnison, Colorado. So if you're looking for a smaller campus in a small mountain town in Colorado, Western might be a really good fit for you. You can kind of get a sense of how small our campus is here. Um, all the buildings with red roofs are campus and it only takes about five to 10 minutes to walk from one end of campus to the other. One of my favorite things about being a student at Western when I was a student at Western is that our backyard is nature's best classroom. So we have over 100 majors and areas of study that you can choose from and all of our students that attend Western have access to millions of acres of BLM land, national forest land, all of this public land that surrounds campus and um, that students can use either for research or for recreation. Um, a couple of these photos here are of actual classes at Western being held outside. Um, specifically, our wildlife biology major is really popular at Western just due to the fact that students can walk right outside of campus and um, do some study in the field of what they're learning in the classroom. So when I talked about how small our institution is, our undergraduate enrollment is 3,014 students, including our master's programs, it's a little bit closer to 3,400 students. But that means that our average class size is 17 students. And our biggest class that we have on campus will only hold about 50. And that'd be a pretty large <laughs> classroom for Western. Um, so you can compare that to a school that would have you sit in a three to 500 person lecture hall your first few years on campus and you won't find that at all on Western's campus. As far as affordability goes, our out of state tuition is around $18,600 per year. You can compare that to the national average, which is around 22,500 and Western is relatively affordable in that sense. But 80% of our students on Western's campus receive the financial aid in the forms of grants or scholarships, which is money that does not have to be paid back. Um, it's totally separate from any loans that you might receive. We have some really competitive financial aid award packages as well. So for any transfer student that has above a 3.0 GPA, you will automatically receive at least $4,500 per year to attend Western. And we have a $7,000 scholarship per, yeah, $7,000 scholarship per year for any Phi Theta Kappa members. Um, and that is a totally automatic scholarship. So no separate applications or nothing else that you have to do for that scholarship other than qualify with your GPA. We also have a central plane discount. So if you um, don't qualify for that scholarship or the merit-based scholarship, you can automatically qualify for the central plains discount just for being from the state of Illinois. And it's about 150% of in-state tuition. We also offer a common scholarship. So that's one scholarship application that you can fill out and it applies you to over 40 different scholarships on our website. And we do have program-based scholarships as well for each academic program on campus. But 100% of our students on campus are eligible for those automatic scholarships as well. And then as far as services that we offer to students, this is certainly not a comprehensive list. I just wanted to highlight some of the services that I think are really important on campus. So we do have an academic resource center that houses our disability services, academic advising, and career services office. And they also do study abroad as well within the academic advising piece. Um, but every single transfer student is automatically paired with an academic advisor who will ensure that your first semester of courses you're getting registered for um, the correct courses and we're not getting you registered for courses you've already taken. Um, so they'll really work with you on your transfer evaluation. And then once you are on campus, you can get an academic advisor from your actual academic major. So it'll be a professor that's teaching the courses that you're in. Um, so you'll be taking classes from them and you'll also be meeting with them anywhere between one to three times a semester um, or more if you so choose. And then we also offer career services where they can help you find a work study job on campus or an internship for your academic major or even a job after you graduate. 
They host mock interviews. They can look over your resume and cover letter and make sure everything looks good to go there. Um, and they are just a really great resource with some um, additional interview practices as well. We also have a writing center and a math tutoring center on campus. So if you ever need help with any of your math related homework or want help studying for a test, you can go into the math tutoring center, no appointment necessary. Same thing with the writing center. You can bring in any paper that you've already written and take it in and have somebody edit it for you and make sure it looks good to go. We also have an EPIC mentorship program where every single freshman and transfer student is automatically paired with an EPIC mentor who is a student um, that is an upperclassman on campus. And they've kind of experienced a couple years on campus and have gotten really involved in things and are a great peer resource for you on campus. They're there to help make sure that your transition onto campus is very successful, but they're also there just to kind of be a friendly face once you get to campus as well. And they are located in our trailhead in the University Center, which is kind of the hub for all the student life offices on campus. But if you ever need anything, you can always stop in there as well. If you're interested in visiting campus, we would love to have you. We're open for in-person tours or virtual tours, whichever works best for you. And then if you're interested in applying, you can go to western.edu forward slash apply and use the code GOWESTERN2021 to um, waive your application fee. And that's all that I have today. Um, if you'd like to jot down my information, I would love to do an unofficial transfer evaluation for you. So you can send any unofficial transcripts to uh, my email or give me a call or a text. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lindsay. And thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Unfortunately, we are coming to the end of our time for this session. Um, so I just wanna thank you for participating in our session. When this window closes, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just met one of multiple sessions being hosted this evening. So in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording, as well as all those others, at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Thank you all, and thank you to our panelists for joining us this evening, and I hope everyone has a great night.